Hello everybody, my name is Marlo and welcome back to Forsaken Lands. Last episode we built that town hall you see behind me there, gave a little backstory on it. Um, but today I want to do something on the smaller scale. Uh, <laughs> over here we've got a nice little raised up bit of land, I've flattened out a little bit. I just want to build a small little house, nothing of that much significance. It's not, you know, got a service behind it like the general goods store or... That's about it. <laughs> um, the town hall, I guess. It's just somebody's house. But um, whilst I build this thing, I want to tell you a story about something that I sort of briefly mentioned in the previous episode. Just a little warning before I start. Viewer discretion is advised. This story isn't exactly the happiest of them. It does have dark tendencies to it, but I don't go too in depth. But just so you know, um, you know, tread cautiously and skip ahead if you don't want to hear it. This is a tale of a young boy who had his life swiped away from him far too early in the most heartbreaking incident of Caldehaz history. William Harold was the youngest resident of this little quaint village at only two years old. He was a cherub, adored by everyone and treasured by his loving family. The beacon had fallen through the ice and thus marked the beginning of spring. The festivities commenced, huge banquets, stage performances and one big happy hamlet. It was all going so wonderfully until Samuel Harold, the father of William, noticed his son and wife were missing. He rushed back to their house. No one was home. The town hall. Nothing. Even out by the Huskies, there was no sign. He checked every building in Kaldahar and still couldn't find them. Without hesitation, Samuel interrupted the celebrations and told everyone that they were missing. This sent the residents of Kaldahar into a surge of panic. They had never had anything like this happen before. It was a peaceful place. They didn't know how to act. After several minutes of furious rushing around the village and its outskirts, they congregated back to the centre and tried to form a plan. Ideas were difficult to muster. They were all too bewildered to think of anything. And that was when they turned to Earl Tuskian, a wise and withered old man. He had been a hunter in his younger days and he knew the surroundings inside and out. Earl wasn't exactly full of exuberance anymore, but nonetheless he agreed to help. A team was gathered and prepared to go on an extensive mission. They put on their snowsuits and followed the trail Earl had come across. Although the only tracking experience he had was for woodland animals, he could use the same techniques on human prints and from those of Samuel's wife, he could tell she ran. The prints headed deep into the forest and to no avail, until Earl noticed a tiny hat hanging from a tree branch. It was William's. Samuel grabbed it and stuffed it into his bag, knowing this might be the only thing he would have left to remember his son. He shrugged that thought off and continued on his way. Several hours had passed and still no sign. They were losing daylight. Absolutely exhausted, Earl fell to the floor and laid his head against a rock when Samuel instantly ordered the old man to get up. Not because he didn't think the 81-year-old needed to rest, but because there was a message written on the rock. Sam, stop following. Go home. I know what is best for Will. Samuel's wife wasn't exactly the most stable of people, but she had never tried anything as crazy as running off with her infant son into the woods in the dark of night. After a few minutes of rest, they continued to follow the slowly breaking trail, when all of a sudden they heard a rustle of leaves and a dark figure run out of a cave and off into the distance. The group headed in, and only to find a small bundle of rags. Earl slowly approached and unraveled. It was William. He was dead. Samuel fell to his knees and let out a defeated cry, slamming his fist against the stone walls of the cave. Bloodied hands and with vengeance on his mind, he bolted out into the woods in search for his wife. Earl and the rest of the group spent the night in the cave. It wasn't safe to journey back yet. In the morning, they brought little William home and prepared him a burial. Samuel or his wife never did return. No one knows where they went, what happened to them, or even if they're still alive. But the dismay of little William's death caused the villagers a great deal of trepidation in their day-to-day -day lives. Kaldahar never was the same. Well, that was certainly something. Yeah, um, <laughs> I have this really bad habit of whenever I'm telling a story to make it fall into the sinister category. Uh, I studied film at college and we'd have to write screenplays fairly often and pretty much all of mine would have 
dark tendencies to them. I, I can't help myself, I don't know what it is, I just don't like writing about sunshine and rainbows, it needs to have something depressing in it. Um, but hopefully that didn't cross the line, considering this is a Minecraft video and I like to brand myself as family friendly. Um, I don't think it was, but regardless I hope you did enjoy it, that is me trying to spice up this series a little, make it a bit more interesting. Uh, we need to get inside because it's getting night time. Um, if you didn't figure out, which some of you may have, some of you may have not, I don't really know how obvious it would have been, but this is in fact little William's house and his unnamed mother and Samuel, I think his name was, I actually recorded that um, talking bit a while ago, so I don't really remember how it went. <laughs> um, but we are going to do the interior here because it's looking a little bland right now, so I've got a whole collection of stuff with me here. Um, what should we place down first? Let's do the firstness. First furnace. We're gonna do the furnace first. Um, <laughs> I like to place slabs or not slabs. Sorry, these are stairs. Sometimes iron bars next to my furnaces just to bulk them out a little bit and make them seem, you know, not just like a block. Um, I don't know. I do that fairly often. I think this tripwire hook is meant to be a coat hanger. I think that's pretty convincing. Uh, over here, is this light enough? Actually, okay. We got no mob spawns. We're good. Um, this is Little William's play area type thing. Uh, got some trapdoors here so I can block it off. That's not where I want to place them. There we go. And a couple of toys. <laughs> a flower pot and a button. No idea what these can signify. Figure out for yourself. Maybe a ball and a chocolate bar. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. That's just his little, his little play area there. Um, what else have I got to go down here? Not much. I didn't really bring much with, with me, did I? Maybe we'll do... Uh, one of the like, nope, that needs to go down. Give me that. There we go. Um, we can put some chests over here. Have that one hanging up like that. Mm, move that one over a bit. Is that better? Yeah, there we go. Okay, uh, let's head on upstairs. Then we can place in the mum and dad's bed. Uh, like that. That. I wish that was sort of like connected down there. That would make more sense. Is there any way I can like rotate that? I don't think so. Oh well. Um, and then of course, little William's crib. His on the floor crib is not very good. I don't know. This is the best they could come up with. Just some carpet in the trap doors. Is this room lit up well enough? I think we're good. Yeah, all eights. We're fine. Um, yeah, so this is little William's house. This is, this is where he stayed before the, not massacre, but the horrible tragedy of his death. Um, yeah, I hope you did enjoy it though. We do need to add one more thing before uh, we finish this build off and this episode. And that is the grave of little William, taken from us far too soon in a truly tragic event. The story still remains in Calder House history, and William is among the hearts, the oh so sorrow hearts of the people of Kaldaha. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. A super fun one. Woo! <laughs> uh, yeah, it was a little bit on the sad side. I hope you did enjoy it, though. I did have a lot of fun making it, believe it or not. Um, it, it was enjoyable, but I hope you did enjoy it. Thank you ever so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.